So, there's a uh, where we used to live, man. There was sure a lot of uh, pretty unique, uh, just straight up unique areas. Um, there was this linear field that kind of ran. Uh, it was narrow but really, really long, and it ran alongside where this other creek came out. Now, once again, this other creek also, uh, the part that, that I'm talking about, it's not on a map. Like, even if you, you go to Google and you take away everything else and you just, you're looking at waterways, dude, it doesn't even show up there, you know, but I know it's there. Um, it's a good, like, it runs a good mile before uh, Google recognizes it as a, a water source so but anyway dude this other creek it, it runs if I'm trying to I'm trying to think of the directions so it's running west to east up this hill and it's got this uh, linear I call it a linear field because it's longer than it is wide you know what I mean it's almost like um, maybe 20 to 30 yards wide but it's like a half a mile long like it is it's a linear field you know but it runs next to this creek and if you follow it now this is uh this is going to require a little bit of a visualization of what i'm trying to describe but now i, I gotta start off with um at this point in my stories, hopefully you guys know what a, a king tree is and, and the characteristics of it, you know, and um, how they're made and, and what they represent um, and where you would normally find them, which if you were to find a king tree, generally speaking, it would be up on a ridge or near the top of the ridge because that's where you're going to find the oldest trees and the tallest trees. Uh, they always had an, uh, an advantage over the other trees that are lower than them and usually they would feed the ones that are lower than them. So generally speaking, uh, you would find the, the biggest ones up top because they were the oldest. And where I'm going to describe had two king trees right next to each other on both sides of this both sides of this creek and that right there is already pretty rare because it's basically you never find a king tree next to uh, a water source you know the two just kind of don't go hand in hand and let unless it is a super old growth area <clears throat> and every tree in the forest has been allowed to mature unless it's an old enough forest you will not find king trees in a valley this creek ran between those two king trees you had one on each side and it you know it went between those and within the next 50 yards it went into this cave and this cave was uh, the opening was large enough I could easily stand in it and this creek came out of the top of this cave like the cave was tall enough I could stand in it and stand under where this creek trickled down and you had this waterfall and, and I had actually taken like soap into the woods just to bathe there because of how perfect it was and uh, you could tell like sometime in the past like uh, 500 or a thousand years ago uh, natives had used the area and had carved out um, like washing bowls or whatever but there was obvious carved like dish shapes in the ground rock next to where this waterfall was so you had some like a large you could almost sit in the one that was dug out that's how big it was and the one next to it you know you can put maybe a, a gallon jug down in it you know but you could tell they were carved into the rock 
right next to this little waterfall where it came out at the top of this cave um, and you know and then it would run down a little bit roughly 50 yards and you would see those twin king trees one on both sides of them and uh, <clears throat> they had the, the creek had cut the bank super deep by those by those king trees um, it was a good 10 feet 15 feet up before the hard bark of the trees you know what I mean where you could tell that's where the tree uh, started growing at ground level and this creek probably wasn't there back then and then the creek started flowing and it slowly had cut a good 15 feet uh, gorge between these trees so I mean it was it was a it was almost like you were walking in another realm and, and those trees were like the gate, dude. I mean, it was just so awesome. And it was also um, where it twisted and went. You know, that was a north-facing slope. So it was cooler. And, of course, that cave, once again, if it was 100 degrees out, you could stand uh, behind that waterfall at the entrance of that cave, and it'd be like 60 degrees, dude. It, it was a perfect place to cool off and get out of the heat. Um, and... The cave would go in maybe 10 feet at the tops, and then it would drop off. So it was already, like, beyond the normal skill level of let's go in here and, and let's check this out. Because it dropped off, which I never really understood. Because it was almost like you could hear water down below, but the water for the creek came out of the top of the rock. You know what I mean? One of the uh, the reasons I was very hesitant to go in is the fact that it dropped off and it seemed to go down to water, but you also had the fact that there was a running spring, like a, a stream coming out of the top, which was very, very confusing. And uh, it just seemed to me like going in was a bad idea because it seemed un unstable and unsafe on, on like a bunch of different levels and plus uh, it was just it was straight up spooky uh, 100% um, the thing about I mean it sounds really cool that location but that entire valley that linear field um, when, when you walk in that linear field you'll notice one thing for sure there isn't a bug or bird that can be seen or heard and I, 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 I it sounds weird I know but I bet if you dug in the ground you wouldn't even find any worms in that valley um, I, I mentioned the valley in one of my first episodes and if you listen to it you can tell I kinda I lock up when I mention it because this valley was uh, it, it wasn't like any other valley and that valley uh, if you went one way you wound up going through the, those gates and it was pretty much you know turn around don't drown um, if you went the other way uh, you'd wind up going into uh, what I called the undiscovered country eventually I mean it was a good hike but you, that's where it took you and if you went the other way if you went opposite of the direction you would approach that like if you continued going straight across the linear field instead of walking with it you just crossed it um, that area was almost like going into the lost woods of Zelda if you've ever played a Zelda game and, and there's this part called the lost woods where you have to take a very specific set of directions or you pretty much you're gonna wind up lost if you went straight across that linear field and you went over that next ridge you were going into pretty much the lost woods of Zelda dude uh, you better have had you better have a compass you better have a good internal compass or a real good external compass uh, a game plan and you, you just don't walk that way unless you have a purpose you know what I mean? That linear field, for as long as it was, 
Like, I could imagine 500 years ago or whenever those European people were there, they probably burned that field repeatedly to keep whatever was past that field on that side of that field, if you follow me. And, like, on, on the other side was, like, where the people stayed, you know. Like, that field was established. It was, like, almost an established barrier uh, to the, the old town that uh, existed back in the day, man. Uh, like, I don't know how else to explain it. Uh, that, that linear field, that linear field played a significant role in whatever kind of crazy stuff went on in them, them hills for however long they've been going on um, that linear field man it's just it's different <clears throat> just like that valley just like that creek just like that cave just like those trees everything about that area just doesn't make sense um, when compared to uh, normal top topography and how, how woods and stuff are formed. I don't know. So that's that. There's other unique areas. I had found... I know I know areas where it's like the beginning of a sinkhole, I guess you would say. Um, it, it's right on a ridge. You know, you drop down off the, t the main ridge. And you know how some hills, they got a secondary ridge that runs? Well, most of these almost potholes would be on those secondary ridges man and it would be like uh, the ground just bold you know it just sank and I mean all the trees you could tell these areas dude because from the distance it's just like what's going on up there right because all the trees uh, towards the center of the bowl the trees are just slightly tilted towards the center but their their tops all come together so it makes a really dense area in the woods that you can see from the distance and then as you you know you you come out from the center of the bowl and I mean these these sinkhole bowls would be um, maybe 50 75 feet across you know they wasn't quite small but they wasn't really big so they didn't really have that many trees in them, but uh, the trees that they had in them, dude, like once a, like I said, the ones in the center lean towards the center, and as you moved out towards the edge of where the the dent in the ground started, um, those trees tilted way more. Like some of the ones on the edge edge were almost laying down flat to get to the center of. Uh, these sinkholes um, it was really weird uh, I always got an eerie feeling when I got around them I mean back then I didn't even understand a lot of what I know now uh, looking back like I couldn't believe some of the things I did but like I would get on you know how I said the the trees towards towards the edge of the rim would be almost laying flat when I would find these dude I would get on those those flat trees and walk out over the center and I mean they would be a good 30 to 50 feet up in the air you know uh, and you'd look down towards the center and all these trees are just pulled together like it was just so weird dude and it would be so thick and dense right there it was almost like another world um, but they creep me out be quite honest I got a really eerie feeling and once again this would be one of those areas where when you would come across it you could hear you could hear a fly fart you know I mean there if there was a fly you you wouldn't hear you wouldn't you would hear no birds you would hear no no squirrels you know chattering no chipmunks running around in the leaves you know no nothing nothing and they had like a sound bubble 
Um, like I said, if the, the sinkhole was 50 to 75 feet across, the, the sound bubble that they would create was at least a good 100 yards in all directions from that, that bowl um, sinkhole. You know, you would have to walk a good football field away before you would even hear a, a, a fly, before you would hear a, a bug fly by you, you know, or before you would see, because in the woods of Kentucky, dude, one of the things you would have to carry around would be what I call a spider stick. And it was no more than just a broken stick that you, you kind of waved in front of you as you walked. Because if you didn't, you would walk into these, these spider webs that these spiders would stretch out. And these spiders that I'm talking about, they had these big square and triangular abdomens that had points and horns that stuck off of them. So you get that on your face and you go to wipe it off. And those things, those little horns and stuff, would they'd cut into you. I mean, they actually hurt. Um even if the spider didn't bite you but you had these spiders everywhere uh, through the woods so to avoid getting a, a spider web to the face and freaking out about a spider um, you would carry a stick and you just kind of you know it wouldn't be a big stick it'd be more or less a twig that you just waved in front of you as you walked I'm saying all this because when you approached one of these uh, sinkholes you wouldn't even need a spider stick spiders wouldn't even uh, build a, net, a web around there because there wasn't no bugs flying through the forest to catch you know it, it, they they had a dead zone around them and I know of two of those sinkholes and they were almost identical in uh, shape and size and structure and I, I, I know I, I know of two of them so, so those are those. Um, there was plenty of, of just totally awesome, unique, special places down there. That's for sure.